At first, no way. Nada, yet, no chance. End of story. We decided on an RV, packed up, and before I knew it, my San Diego home disappeared in the rearview mirror. If the golf gods allow, our caravan's going to travel 1,200 miles, stopping at six different courses all around Southern California. And along the way, we're going to work with golfers in desperate need of my help. I'm troubleshooter Dean Reinman, but you can call me King of the Road. Trailers for Santa Rita. Golfer's Journal, Day 2. No golf trip in Southern California is complete without a stop at a real golf mecca. The area is called the Coachella Valley, but you probably best know some of its cities, Palm Springs, Palm Desert, La Quinta, and Indian Wells. Our next stop in our journey. Hey there. I guess the word's out. We're on the road. Welcome aboard. Thanks. Well, nice to be here in Indian Wells. Well, listen, we're going to spend a little time today. I mean, hopefully, I can help some of you with your golf game. And um, what I'd like to do, we'll do it kind of in a clinic format, and I'll do a little one-on-one. -on -one. Um, one of the things I think is beneficial is sometimes when you're watching other people, although the person who's taking the lesson sometimes feels like they're getting the most, I found out more oftentimes the person watching is learning more because the person that's actually hitting is so worried about contact and where it's going. <laughs> All right. So um, now that I'm here, why don't we... Uh, Toss it out to a couple questions or concerns. I can't understand how I can go up there and I'll shank one, and I'll say, well, hit another one, and then the next one goes straight down the middle. You're using the bad swing and saying, oh, not that, I want this. I got you. And then all of a sudden you bring us, oh, that's what you want. So it's the, the feeling is in there, it's always stored in there, but it's can you remember how to get to it? The most important time to take is after you've missed one. You have to settle now. If you don't settle down after you miss the first one, you're going to miss more. And it'll snowball. And pretty soon, you'll have to slow down because you'll stop rushing. So if you take a few seconds and settle in, get the right club, make the right decision, even if you miss one or two that way, generally speaking, you're going to hit a lot more better shots. Uh, talk a minute about the grip and, and how you should develop the proper grip so that on each approach to your ball, you have the proper grip to start with. Okay, well, why don't we slide over here? We'll start spending some time now over here, and we'll, we'll cover that first. All right, come on over here with me. When you're on the road, you can use your towels for more than laundry, room service, and drying off after a shower. I like to use them to strengthen my fingers and forearms at night. What I do is I take and wet the towel just lightly, and I roll it up, and what I do is I'll start to squeeze and try to squeeze all the water out. And keep squeezing slowly, and the more you get the water out, the harder you have to squeeze and twist. And you can do this in two directions. One is forward with the right and back with the left, and then you can reverse it. You go back with the right, forward with the left. You squeeze until you can't squeeze anymore. And what that'll do, it'll strengthen your fingers, forearms, and help you hit the ball a lot farther. Anytime, Scott. See you. World class company. King of the road. With the grip, the easiest way to think about it is this. Put your two hands out like that. All right? Now just close your fingers. That's it. Now that's hard, isn't it? Now it's easier up here than it is 
down here. So when I see people take their grip like this, this is when it gets hard because you're, you're going to have one shoulder lower than the other, right? Because if both hands were stuck out like that, you close them, that doesn't work. So now when you do this, what happens? This shoulder goes down a little bit. So it's easier if you take the grip here. You see where the club is? Yeah. Up at a slight angle because it's not as heavy. So if you take it up like this where your hands are a little about belt buckle high and the club head's at about eye level, and then you can put your hands on it, and then all you do from there is just lower it. Now, what are you looking for? Well, if I open the hand up, you'll see how it's laying across the pad right here on an angle, and I could do this. See how I can hook it with one finger, and then it bounces on the other? That's basically where it should fit. If it's up too high in the hand and you try to hold it, it won't because it'll slide out. So you try to get it to where if you opened your hand like that and you took these three fingers off, it would still balance there. Okay, so it's the index finger and the pad. I know what I'm talking about. Hey, now that's a novel idea. <laughs> I got lucky again. All right. Now, where you want it in this hand? A little bit more down in the fingers. What you'll notice is if I put my hand down here, you see how it runs from about the middle joint of the index finger down across to the last crease of my pinky finger. And that's going to be kind of the angle that I hold it at. Now, pressure-wise, you're going to hold it with a little bit more pressure with the middle two fingers and a little bit more with the last three of this. Middle two of the right hand, last here. But, you see these two right here? If you've got them, use them. Don't do this. There's no point in losing these two fingers. You need the control. It gives you a sense of feel. I mean, all your vibrations from the club head and the shaft, the touch, is going to go through these two first, hopefully, before it gets to the brain, hopefully. Okay. So I, I see people all the time thinking they use too much right hand, so they take the thumb off, they take the index finger off, and then the club's going to want to twist more when you hit, hit the ground or hit the ball. So go ahead and put them on there. And then the question is this. How many of you have heard that you're supposed to hold the grip like a bird? I guess so. All right. Let me ask you a question. How many birds are you going to swing at about 100 miles an hour? <laughs> it's a silly question, mind you, but... You know, if I'm going to hold something, I'm going to swing 100 miles an hour, it might be different than if I'm holding it sitting still, right? Got it. So you're not, the, the problem with that concept is you, involuntarily your muscles are going to go when they get near the ball. And you'll have a jerking action of the muscle, which is going to distort the flow of the swing. So what you want to do is once you've established the pressure, you keep it constant all the way through the swing. You don't change it in the middle. Right here. Shake my hand. Okay, now show me here, relax here, show me the amount of pressure you, pressure you would use if you were going to hold the grip. Now you see how, it's, see, that, see how it's quivering? See how I can't turn its forearm? All right, that's way too much pressure. Now if I said to you, hold it like you were holding a bird. Go ahead. <laughs> now, don't, keep, keep it like I've that. I've never held a bird in my life. Well, well, you know, there's always a first Thank time, you. so what the heck. All right, now you see that, how I can take those fingers out, but you see that right there? That is what's more important. He has to hold enough here, hold it, hold my two fingers, go ahead, tight. hold it, just just enough, so, no, no, not tight, you don't want to kill me, just enough so that now it's too loose because my fingers are going to come out, right? That, about that much pressure, keep it constant once you got it there. Now, don't change that pressure, but you see what, how stiff his arm is? See when I was moving my fingers around, this whole, this is moving like one unit, right? Relax your elbow but now you relax your fingers. This is a little bit tricky for golfers, but you ever have a cocktail? You ever have a soft drink? <laughs> How would you hold that? Hard. Not stiff and loose and stiff and loose. You have to have finger control, and the arm has to be relaxed enough so you can actually get it to your mouth. Otherwise, yeah. it's up there. Over your shoulder. So, exactly, over the shoulder, wherever. <laughs> so what you have to do is you have to, you have to use enough pressure in your fingers to know that the club is secure enough that it's not going to slip. And then you need to relax the rest of your arm. Now, keep that finger pressure there. Rela there you go. Keep relaxing the rest of your arm and your wrist. There. Now, you see how his arm's moving now? Yeah. So now he has suppleness in the arm and the wrist. See how he can turn his wrist freely? But that takes a little bit of practice. Don't try to do that just when you're hitting golf balls. When you're home, just put a club next to your chair, and when you're watching television during commercial break, pick it up. See if you can hold it, but 
with the finger pressure, but relaxing your wrists and forearms and elbows. It'll do two things. It'll increase your speed and flow, which will make you have a little bit more distance and better contact. And the second thing is, it's better on your body. You won't find it on a map, but you can't drive out to play golf at Indian Wells without seeing this wild sight. Giant windmills, hundreds of them, dot the landscape along the interstate just north of Indian Wells. Strong winds blow constantly through this area called the San Gorgonio Pass, spinning the turbines and generating electricity. If you play on Bermuda grass, you'll notice that when I put my finger in the ground, it's about that long before you get down to the actual dirt. So you have to be really careful when you take your selection of the club and the type of shots you're going to hit. Now here I need an L wedge, but I have to be extremely careful at how much I open the face and how tall I stand. Just open the face a little bit, because if I open it too much when I swing, it'll slide right under the ball, won't get on the green. And then I'll still have the same shot. So get set up here where you're just the right distance, slightly open the face, then make your chip shot, and you should get a fairly consistent contact, otherwise, you'll slide right underneath. Okay. Now, the first thing I notice in your swing is that your posture is, you're standing this way. Okay? So from here, it's very difficult to swing on a proper angle to the ground because it, your body's going to want to go around this way or it'll swing straight up and down. It can't kind of find a middle ground. It's either going to go around this way. How many people here have said you've been down? You sit on a bar stool when you're drinking. <laughs> Watch what I'm doing here. Let me use this club. As I bend over from my hip sockets, now everybody put their hand right here and lift your right leg. You feel the crease right there? That's the joint that you bend from. That's the natural joint or bend from the body. What happens if I bend from my waist? You see what the lower spine vertebrae are doing right here? Okay. So you don't want to bend from there. Why? Because you're kinking that area of your back. You don't rotate as well. So you bend from your hip sockets, push your knees forward. So you get some space between your thighs and your hands. Okay. So that's the first thing you need to work on. And that's not something that's difficult, but it takes just practice. Everybody can get there. So you're going to go over. There you go. And then the club's going to be there. Now, how much space would you like to have between your thighs and the back of your hands or grip? Anybody know how to know? Six inches. All right, watch. Stay right there. Take your right hand off. Swing it right through there. You see that? As long as you can swing that through there, your hands and arms aren't too close to your body. Now, how do you know if you're too far away from it? In other words, your arms are pushed out too far. Put both hands on. Now, start to push the club out slowly until you feel you feel these muscles yet all right the minute you start feeling these muscles starting to tighten up your arms are stretching out too far you shouldn't those shouldn't be that active so you want them somewhere from this this real loose kind of cramped feeling just as it starts nearing where you start feeling that arms wanting to pull your upper body sort of off balance that's the key all right so now from there go ahead and make a swing mm -hmm. okay now do it again. Remember I told you, I said, if the practice swing is incorrect, technically, does it matter if you go to the golf ball? No. If you were trying to make letters when you started as a kid, you'd stand up a little bit. And they said, well, make an L. And you made an F. You don't have it yet. It hasn't clicked. So to do it faster doesn't make any sense because you're still going to make the wrong letter. So what you have to do here, go ahead and get set. Now make your back swing. Stop. See where this knee is going right here? Mm -hmm. Now, swing down. See where it wants to go? Yeah. So here, you, you have what we call piston legs. They, the, your knees want to move out and back. You see that? Uh -huh. And what you really want to do is you want to move in. See where that's going? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then you want to move the other direction. See it? Sure. So now, bend your, put your hands behind your back like this. Let me borrow, take that out of your way. Now, bend your knees more than you think. There. Now. Go this way. Now you see your right foot? That should stay flat. Okay. There. Now go the other way. Use both edges there. And then go into your finish with your toe. Up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going all the way to there. And you have to work those muscles. 
don't make the whole swing, just learn what the lower body does. So you take this away, you overbend your knees so that you can really feel the muscle groups working because if you go straighter, which is what most women do, they use their hips, mostly because they've been taught to use their hips. They say, oh, you turn your hips. Yeah, but that doesn't shift your weight. If I stand here and I turn my hips, where did the weight go? It's still dead center. So you can't have both. You can't have a weight shift and a turn and have the weight in the same place. You're either going to shift your weight and then turn, which then moves the weight over, or you're going to turn right from here, which then means your weight doesn't shift at all. For information about the Dean Reinmuth Golf Schools, call 888-297-DEAN or visit his website at www.deanofgolf.com. King of the road. Another question. Yes, sir. Too much right hand. Too much right hand? Yes. If you have too much right hand, what is it you're supposed to do to have less right hand? I would think maybe uh, slow down. He's guessing. Yeah. So he hasn't been told. He, you, you don't know yet. That's right. So how can you ask yourself to do something you don't know what you're doing? Right? All right. I, so come on out here. Let's take the premise that you have too much right hand. We'll start okay. with that. All right? You go ahead and get set up. Put the right hand on. Take a swing. Yep. Okay. Now, this is probably what your description of, if you do that, that's probably why you're getting this too much right hand concept, okay? But it's not too much right hand. It's improperly moving. There's a difference between too much and not moving properly, right? Okay. So put it, on your, put it in your right hand. Take your left hand off. Now, relax your arm. It's too tight. Make it soft, supple. That's it. Now, all right. Now you're here. Now you're too. You're way too tight again. You see that elbow? Relax your elbow. Relax your right shoulder. Drop it. That feeling. You feel that? Mm -hmm. I want that loose. Now, when the club comes down slowly, I want you to show me how you get the club back to impact or where the ground is. All right. Coming slow. Now, what do you do now? All right. You feel how tight your arm is? Now, I'm going to give you one of our troubleshooter drills here, okay? This is a good one. Just let your arm relax. Hang. Dead hang. No, just, that's it. Now, just keep it. Don't do it. No, no, no. Don't help me. Just let it. Just feel like a noodle. You feel that? Yes. Now, if we put a club in your fingers, okay. can you do the same thing with your arm? I hope so. All right. Well, that's what we're going to try to do. Okay. Now, remember, there's different because now there's something in there. And so there may be another objective wanting to come up. All right. So now just let it go back easy and down easy. Make it easier. There you got it. Make it easier yet. Keep making it easier. Now you're getting closer to it, see? Now, make it harder, more active. Now you're going farther away from a proper swing. Okay. Can you feel that? Yeah. So you've got an ebb and flow. You're either going to get closer to the swing you want or you're moving farther away from it. You've got to know that. Because when you're teaching yourself and you're driving down the road, say, oh, I'm farther away from you know, home than I was before. I got to turn around. So now you've got to go easier. Now I want you to put both hands on and take a couple of practice swings. See if you can match that feeling of this gradual forward speed with that on there. Correct. Good. Now I want you to go to the ball and I want you to use the same length and speed swing. And how far do you think that ball will go before you hit it? Fifty yards. Okay, so use the same length and speed swing. Exactly. Now use that over the ball. Okay, pretty good. Now, there's two things. The first is you have to get that flow. Mm -hmm. That's going to take you some work. Mm -hmm. And you do it at this waist high to waist high. All right? And the second is you, when you match that over the ball, and those two consistently can match, you don't increase speed, you increase the length a little bit. Okay. You go a little farther back, <clears throat> and then a little farther back. And what will happen is you go a little farther back, you, your body will start trying to get these little jumpy movements in there. You've got to work them out. Mm -hmm. the, and the second part of this, which is what's going to give you the distance, we were talking about the draw earlier, so we want to know how to draw. Well, part of it is if you don't shape the face correctly in the forward swing, you won't be able to swing faster because your arms are stuck in the wrong position. Mm -hmm. They're moving this way as opposed to moving this way. Mm -hmm. So put this in his hand. We're going to face our group.
group here. Now, relax your wrist. Use your fingers, not your wrist. And I want you to feel where the toe of the club is going. Relax your wrist. Use your fingers. Feel it turn to the right. Mm -hmm. Now, relax it and turn it to the left. Mm -hmm. You feel that? Mm -hmm. All right, but you, not in your wrist. You see that? Yeah. You don't see any spot where you just twist it like this, right? So when you get that gradual rotation of the face all the way through the whole forward swing, the club face starts squaring up gradually, your odds are better. So if you think about the golf club and the face doing this, slowly like this, slowly back the other way, you'll have more consistency of getting the club to square than you will if you hold the face like this all the way to the last second and then try to flip the face over. Okay? You'll also build more speed. And that's something you can practice by just doing this. You hold your club like this, you find a line like this or a, a carpet or anything, and as you do it, you watch the face instead of the ground. You see how I, my eyes are following the face? See what it's doing? Now if I do this, see how the, shape, the face stayed open too long and then I had to flip it over. So we want to be able to get this club here with both hands in the fingers, slow turn here, Slow turn here. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to turn from here to where? To here, not to the ball. Okay. You're turning from here gradually to there. You feel that? Mm -hmm. You got that? Now I want you to do that over the ball with both hands. Just focus on turning. Correct. Hear the little difference in the sound? Yeah, the yeah. pop? Yeah. That's when you deliver the mass. Remember I said there were two factors, speed and mass. Until you learn how to develop that mass, don't even try for speed, because all the ball is going to do is go farther off line. Okay? I really appreciate you being here with me today. Hopefully I was some help. Thank you very much. Enjoy it. My pleasure. Came up with this crazy idea. Why not take the Golf Channel Academy on the road? Trailers for sale. At first, I was a little concerned about what they had in mind.